What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to WrestleMania 13 Review. I just literally posted the WrestleMania 12 Review about an hour ago. There's a clock up there. I posted it about an hour ago. Go check that out. 24-7 is doing okay. He will be posting a video in the next few days to a week, somewhere around there. He is okay. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, we posted, finally, the triple threat match. Go check that out. Give it some love. It's a match that the three of us are all very proud of. Go watch it. it we enjoyed it. Thank you for the support. And now let's get into this review. WrestleMania 13. Got the pen. Got the clipboard, as always. Let's do this. Happened on March 23rd, 1997 at the Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois. 18,197 people in attendance. We kicked off the show with a fatal four-way elimination number one contenders match between the Godwins, the Headbangers, the New Blackjacks, and Doug Furness and Phil LaFon. First off, who are them? Who is Doug Furness? Who is Phil LaFon? I have no idea. I've seen this show about two or three times now, and I... I remember them, but only from this show. I don't remember ever seeing them on any other show, ever. Um, everyone goes after everyone immediately. The Blackjacks eventually get eliminated by disqualification. Furness and LaFon get eliminated. Mosh hits a cool dive to the apron on Henry O'Godwin. Hillbilly D Jim distracts the referee. The Headbangers pick up the victory, win the match. I gave it two stars. It was okay. Nothing exciting, nothing boring, just a match. Up next, the Intercontinental Championship match between the champion, Rocky Maivia, and the Sultan, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the Sultan is Rikishi. I very well could be wrong on that. I'm just taking a wild guess. I think I saw that somewhere in the past. I don't remember. So just correct me if I'm wrong. This is The Rock's very first WrestleMania as well. There's, They start out with a stare down for about a minute or two. They then have some back and forth action. At one point, the Sultan is outside up against the ring post. Rocky Maivia goes for a clothesline. He clotheslines the ring post by mistake. Um, the Sultan with a diving headbutt, I always thought big guys who do dives was awesome. Like, I, I always love seeing big guys doing dives off the top or dives off anything. That's pretty cool for me. Um, double clothesline, they both uh, clothesline each other. Um, at one point, Rocky Maivia hits a diving crossbody. He pins the, the Sultan. Iron Sheik is out there with the Sultan. He distracts the referee. So this way the pin doesn't count. But eventually Rocky Maivia does win the match. He picks up the victory. I gave it two and a half stars. Better than the opening match, but still not great. Still not that good. Up next, Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Gold Dust. I just recently watched their Royal Rumble 1997 match. And that match... I think it's a little better than this one, but this one is still pretty good. I still enjoy this one quite a bit. Um, early on, Goldust just dominates. At one point, Triple H is tied up in the ropes on the apron, and Goldust is beating him There's with punches and kicks and all sorts of things. Triple H throws a Goldust off the rope to the floor. There's multiple chops and stomps by uh, Triple H. There's rest holds. Um, at one point, uh, Triple H is going for a dive off the top rope. Goldust jumps and hits him with his butt, kind of like Naomi's rear view, a finishing move in a way, kind of, sort of. Not really. And then the finish, eventually China goes and walks over to Marlena. Marlena picks up, or 
Goldust, I can't think today. Goldust picks up Marlena, puts her on the apron, makes sure she's okay. Triple H rams in the Goldust. Marlena falls off the apron into China's arms. China's shaking her in like a bear hug type thing. Goldust turns around. Triple H hits him with a pedigree. One, two, three. Match over. Your winner, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. I gave the match three and a half stars. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was good. Again, I think their match at the Royal Rumble is a little bit better, but this one was still good. I still enjoyed this one. Up next, the WWE Tag Team Titles. After I take a drink of my Prime. Not a sponsor, but very tasty. I like it. The Tag Team Champions, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog, defend the titles against Vader and Mankind. And to me, this was the worst match on the show. Still not terrible, but I was just bored kind of throughout the show, uh, throughout the match. All four men in the ring at the same time. At one point, Owen Hart hits a dropkick to both Vader and Mankind at the same time. I thought that was pretty cool to watch. Um, But just not a lot of exciting things happen. The match ends in a double countout. When Mankind, and I think it was the British Bulldog, it could have been Owen Hart, I forget, where both men were outside the ring. Mankind had like a submission hold on. Gets a counted out. Both men are counted out. I've stated it before, even in these reviews, I hate count out finishes. I hate disqualification finishes. So that always lacks points for me. So I gave this match one and a half stars because I was bored. Plus the stupid double count out finish. Like, worst match on the show. But we go from the worst match of the show to the best match, not only on this show, but maybe possibly in WrestleMania history, depending on who you ask. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Bret the Hitman Hart in a submission match. Now, on paper, you don't think this would work because Stone Cold isn't a submissions guy. He's a brawler. Bret Hart is the submissions guy. So, on paper, you don't think it would work, but it did. This is, like, the best match in Mania history, or one of them. You have Ken Shamrock as a special referee, but so much going on. Stone Cold and Bret Hart start fighting immediately before Bret Hart's music is even done playing. They're fighting on the outside. They're fighting in the crowd. Um, Bret Hart dives off the barricade and hits a diving punch or a diving fist drop. Um, Stone Cold was going to use the steps. Bret Hart stops him. Bret Hart hits the f- figure four around the ring post. Um... Stone Cold has a Boston Crab on Bret at one point. Stone Cold tries to put Bret Hart in the sharpshooter. Stone Cold gets busted open. Bret Hart uses a chair. Just so much going on. Stone Cold grabs an extension cord, chokes Bret with it, but Bret grabs the ring bell, swings it up, hits Stone Cold in the head. Bret Hart then locks in the sharpshooter. Austin doesn't tap out. He doesn't quit. He passes out. Therefore, Ken Shamrock calls for the finish. Bret Hart wins. Match is five stars. What a match. This was amazing. I've only seen this match maybe three or four times, but every time I watch it, I love it. It's amazing. One of the best matches in WrestleMania history. Is it number one? Maybe, depending on who you ask. In my opinion, and it's not it's not the best in Mania history. But it's up there. Top five for sure. I love this match. Two matches to go. We have a six-man tag Chicago street fight. Ahmed Johnson and the Legion of Doom versus the Nation of Domination. There's literally a kitchen sink. In the ring. Hawk brought it out. 
Excuse me, I got the hiccups. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a kitchen sink. There's a bunch of other weapons. There's a nightstick, a trash can, a two by four, fire extinguisher, a rope, a director's chair, street sign. Just so many weapons. And all of them are used. Um, at one point, Ahmed Johnson put Farouk through a table. At one point, it looked like Animal tried, but he botched it and they fell off the table. Um, Ahmed, John Ahmed Johnson was being choked with the rope. Farouk then was choking Hawk with the rope. Um, everyone from the Nation of, of Domination eventually got involved in this match, went in there. Finally, Ahmed Johnson and the Legion of Doom pick up the victory. They victory. They win the match. I gave it two stars. I typically love hardcore matches, street fight matches, extreme rules matches. Anything involving weapons, I typically love. But because it's a six-man tag and it's tornado tag, there's a lot going on. And there's things happening in different parts of the arena and like so much going on you almost have to watch the match two or three times just to see everything that's happening so it's that's why i only gave it two stars because there's a lot going on and it's hard to see everything on one watch so there's that and now the main event for the wwe title the champion psycho sid who poops his pants in this match mind you Versus The Undertaker. I didn't want to say that, but 24-7 told me I had to, so I did. The Psycho said, pooped his pants in this match. I don't know what spot or when, but he does somehow. That's the only time I'm mentioning it. <laughs> anyway, at the start, I love Undertaker's entrance. It's always been good, specifically on this show. I think... His entrance at Mania 11 is slightly better, but this one's still amazing. At one point, Bret Hart comes out for some reason, talking. Talking crap about Shawn Michaels, who's on commentary. The psycho said, power bombs Bret. Bret rolls out. Then Undertaker and Sid just start attacking each other. Sid puts a bear hug on Undertaker, Undertaker and he holds it for quite a while. Probably about a full minute, honestly. Um, Sid throws Undertaker th into, not through, into the commentary table. Undertaker throws Sid over the barricade into the crowd. At one point, there's a double big boot in the match. Sid hits a few dives off the second rope, which <laughs> I'm surprised he, he didn't break his leg after... What happened in WCW, how he broke his leg diving off the second rope. Anyway, we're back on track here. Sid hits a tombstone. Undertaker kicks out. Bret Hart comes back, hits Sid with a chair. Bret leaves, but then comes back again. Psycho Sid hits Bret Hart. Undertaker comes around, picks up Sid, tombstones. Psycho Sid, one, two, three. Undertaker wins, of course. It's WrestleMania. Undertaker wins. He is 6-0 at WrestleMania. I enjoyed this match. I gave it three stars. Not the best match on the show. Not the worst. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was awesome. At the end of the day, I give the whole show maybe like a 6 out of 10. It was better than I remembered it being. I went in with kind of low expectations because I remember last time I watched it about four years ago, I didn't enjoy it that much, but watching it now, I enjoy it a little more than I thought it. I, I remembered it anyway. That was it. That was the review for WrestleMania 13. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. 24-7, as I said, will be back. He'll be posting a video within the next few days. He will be back for the WrestleMania 14 review ne next week. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.